Welcome everyone. Um, my name is Karen Davis and I'm the communications and publications director for the Camera Club of Richmond. So I'm not sure exactly what hat this would fall under, but tonight we're gonna talk about our image evaluation, what it is and who it's, who's involved and how you participate and kind of go over all of those aspects of image evaluations. And probably the best way to, to guide us through this whole thing is for me to share my screen and actually show you the, um, the procedures. These just went out today in our February newsletter. And you can also find them on our website. As you notice, we, we have re revised them just a little bit in 2022 from what we did in, in 2021. I'll point out that the table of contents may look a little overwhelming if you print this out and like, oh my gosh, there are a lot of pages. But if you look at it online, the table of contents is interactive. So if you click on one of these, there are hyperlinks to um, that various uh, subjects within the document. So if you really just have a question about file naming, you can click on that and go straight to the file naming session. But we're going to go through a little bit step by step and just kind of talk about um, what, what's going on with image evaluations. We are having to be cognizant again this year of the coronavirus. And again, we are only doing virtual image evaluations to start the year. We have all of our fingers crossed that um, things might clear up a little bit and we can actually get back to some in-person meetings. But for right now and for, for February and I believe April would be our next image evaluation, we're pretty sure that those are going to be virtual um, online. So you'll get a Zoom link to be able to, to log in and see those. And the other aspect of that is, of course, we'll have to do digital images only. Uh, maybe someday we'll get back to being able to evaluate prints when we can all meet in person. But, but for right now, we are going to follow that plan. If things do open up and we're able to do in person, what we talked about last year and then again this year is if you've submitted all these digital images along the year for these image evaluations and we get toward the end of the year, we are allowing you to take those digitals and submit them as prints if you want to. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as, as we get into it. Um, we do have six image evaluations each year and photographers are invited to submit two images for each of those evaluations. You don't have to do two. You could do just one or you can do none, um, but up to two images each time. And of course you have to be a, a paid member of the club. Um, it's $40 dues for the entire year. We have some members who are meetup members only and they're not eligible to participate in the, the evaluations. We do wanna stress that the work that you do, um, the, all the camera work, the staging, any post-production creative changes that you make to your photos must be the work of the photographer. So what we're trying to get away from is if you attend um, a training session and somebody sets up all the lights and they hire the model and they bring them in and they, they set everything up and pose the model and you just click the camera, we, um, we really don't want those photos because it doesn't show your talent, your eye, your work. So please make sure that um, any images that you send in, that if, if you're on a photo outing and you know the, the tiger runs by you over there and, and you run after him and you get that shot, that's great. But you know if, if they stage the camel walking across and then they pose where the lighting is just perfect and he says, you need to use this f-stop and, and this aperture, you know, that, that's really not your work. And so what we're hoping is that we're gonna see um, your work, see what you can do. Um, I mentioned uh, it's either one or two digital images. And then what happens with those images is that they come in to our digital director. He, it's a he right now, Nelson Marquina is our new digital director this year. He will actually um, consolidate all those images and get them to the person who's doing our evaluation. Usually it's a professional photographer. It could be an artist. It could be, um, could be a club member. We've had some club members that have done evaluations for us. Um, someone in town, and as we were saying earlier with, uh, with COVID and Zoom, we've had some evaluators come in from um, all over the place. In fact, um, our February evaluator is Nick Stover from California. And Nick does an awesome job. So it, it's gonna be really interesting. Um, 
the images have to be in um, proper, have to have the proper digital file name. And we'll talk a little bit about that and be in the correct format. Um, there's some specifics that we'll go over um, as we get into the nitty gritty of this. Now, assigned subjects, you notice I skipped those um, earlier because I want to tell you exactly what an assigned subject is. Um, each year, the board comes up with, um, with three special categories that we um, challenge you to sort of stretch yourself a little bit. And um, we'll announce what month. So February, we do not have an assigned subject, but three of those evaluation nights will have an assigned subject. This year, the board decided we wanted to focus on street photography or photojournalism. And that one will be in April. So you got a little bit of time to think about that. And then another one is called About Time. And that could be anything. We wanna see your creativity on both that one and Abandoned. So those are our three assigned subjects. And on the night where we have an assigned subject, so for instance, in April, um, when Fred Morton is doing our evaluation, you can, you, if you enter two images, one of the images has to be into the assigned subject category. If you decide you don't want to do street photography, photojournalism, then you may only submit one image for that particular evaluation. We ask that you don't watermark them. So please don't put your name on the face of the image. And I'll explain a little bit more about why that is when we get into the process of well, exactly how does this evaluation take place. Um, and then for those of you who have been around before and have participated, if you have sent in one of your images for the end of year competition and it did not win an award, you can send it back through. So maybe you, you sent one in and didn't win anything, but you've got somebody to give you some critique on that and you, you changed that image, you maybe cropped it a little, or you lightened it a little. As long as it didn't win anything in an end of year competition, you can send that through again um, for evaluation and then resubmit it if you want for the end of year competition. Now I've mentioned that end of year competition a couple of times, what is it? Well, we have these evaluations. I mentioned that there are six of them throughout the year with two maximum each. So that gives you 12 images. And I'd like to think of those evaluations as preliminary rounds, if you will, for our end of year competition. And that takes place in October each year. It's used, that's the deadline. And you would submit those to, it's a, it's a friendly little competition that we have. And that's where these categories will come into play as, as we get into it, because there'll be hundreds and hundreds of images that come in from all of our photographers. Right now we have 116 members in the club. So our digital director is very busy in October, um, collecting all of those submissions for the end of year competition. And um, he will go through, sort those out. And in order to make it kind of a more even playing field, we um, use different categories for those images. So for instance, um, we have those three assigned subjects that we talked about a minute ago, but we also have categories like animals and flowers and whatever. Um, so again, we'll, we'll go into that a little bit more detail. So when we do evaluate or judge these images, what exactly are those evaluators or judges looking for? Well, we like to keep it simple because, you know, we're a club. We know we have a lot of beginning photographers and we have some really great expert professional photographers as well. Um, but to try and keep things simple, there are five things that we ask our evaluators and our judges at the end of the year to look for. Number one is the overall impact that they see in your photo. The, what is their first impression? I like to call this the wow factor. Um, when you flip the page in the book and you see something that actually stops you or in a magazine, you know, that's, that's what they are looking for, um, for the, the, the very first impression that they have on your photo. Then of course, they're gonna dig in a little bit and look at the technical factors. Is it in focus? Um, did you have a proper use of depth of field, is your exposure, your lighting, color balance, um, all of those technical things um, that's going through their eye and their brain as they're looking at your photo. Number three is creativity. Are you giving us a fresh perspective on something? Um, you know, there are a bazillion pictures of Main Street Station, but, you know, has somebody just maybe focused in on the doorknob to Main Street Station 
or a picture from, you know, looking across maybe from another building um, higher up. So just it, think in terms of creativity, um, picture of a, a leaf where you really zoomed in to get the details of that leaf. Then this composition, is it a visually pleasing image or a disturbing image? I mean, it could be something that evokes um, uh, strong feelings one way or the other, um, something that draws the viewer into your subject. Does the composition follow the rules of composition or did you maybe break them on purpose because you want to show something that's very symmetrical and that rule of thirds just doesn't make sense in that picture. So that's what the, the evaluators and judges are looking for. How, how did you compose that picture? And then finally finishing, um, this comes into play more when we are judging and evaluating prints because, you know, is there a mat and, you know, is it, is it nicely attached to that mat? But in the digital environment, you can also add borders or a little bit of vignetting or matting or something to, to make that picture stand out and kind of give it that last little finishing touch. I will note too that on our YouTube channel, we had a wonderful training session by Anthony Rumley. Um, Anthony is a professional photographer here in Richmond and also a member of our camera club. He did a great training session for us on how to put digital mats on your photos. And it is, like I said, it's on that YouTube channel. If, um, if you're interested in learning how to do that, it's a, it's a great how-to step-by-step showing you how you can do that in Photoshop. So that's, that's something that maybe sets them apart from some of the other images. Oops. Okay, the formatting of our images. Um, a number one, we need to have them in JPEG format because um, our digital director will be not only creating a slideshow for um, our evaluators and judges to be able to view those images, but we do put those into a member gallery on our website and they may be featured on our Camera Couple of Richmond Facebook page and also in Southern Exposure. So the JPEG format is just much more versatile for us to work with. Um, the longest side here, we're getting into a little bit of the technical details here. The longest side cannot exceed 1,920 pixels. And we want to, you to set your resolution close to 300 to try and keep that file size small. Um, there's really no hard and fast rule on this, but if we could keep them under 10 megabytes, then they show beautifully and it doesn't clog up email servers and our storage and all of that. So I know that's a little bit technical. So I'm gonna stop here and see if anyone has any questions about the formatting of those images. I do mine in Lightroom, but it's also, you can also do that in Photoshop and you'll see that there are two uh, how to's, if you will. If you click those links, it'll take you, whoops, it'll take you to our um, website with those step-by-step -step procedures on how to do that in Lightroom and how to do that in Photoshop. So I don't see any hands raised. I don't see any puzzled oh, look. Hello. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Carol does. Um, I guess I'm just asking if when I, I export, all it is, is is making sure that you, when you do your export out of, I'm in Lightroom, um, mm -hmm. that I set the pixels in that little screen to 1920, for example, on the long side, even exactly. though it was something else before that and that, that's all you have to do right that's all you have to do okay yeah um in most cases though i mean depending on i shoot raw so i will usually also there's another box a little bit below that that it says image no larger than and it's measured in kilobytes so i'll put like is it ten thousand ten thousand kilobytes just to keep it under um i think it's ten thousand kilobytes is 10 megabytes so I'll also check that checkbox in Lightroom to make sure that it's small enough. But most of the time they're under 10 anyway, but that's just to kind of make sure. But the 1920 is, um, is kind of the, the, the most important one because you don't want an image to pop up for the evaluator that's about itsy bitsy tiny, you know, this big that they can't see or one that's fallen off the edge of the screen. Now I know in the past with Michael, if you get your images in in time, 
And there's there's an issue with that. Um, Michael would get back with folks and say, hey, you know, can you resubmit this image? And in Nelson being brand new, um, I, you know, hopefully he'll have some time to do that. But you know, if you do wait till midnight on the deadline, he may not be able to work with you. So if you if you're unsure, get him in early, or even um, send it to me beforehand, and I will be happy to to look him over. Um, my email address is publications.ccrva at gmail.com, and of course the digital director is digital dot ccrva at gmail.com. So either one of us would be glad to, to tell you beforehand. Um, and just, um, you know, to give you some feedback on it, if you'd like to do that before you, you submit them. All right, any other questions on all this technical stuff here? Well, I guess um, for me, um, I'm not sure what that, all that digital image formatting means. I guess I haven't tried doing it. Like that before, so. Um, do you just, do you use Lightroom? No, uh huh. Or Photoshop? I have, used, I have used Photoshop in the past, but recently I haven't using. Okay. It. So. Well, um, when you get an image that you think you might want to enter, go ahead and email okay. it to me. Yeah, and I'll be glad to look at it and, and see what the formatting looks like. I'm. That's my weak link here. I'm not the uh, really keen on all of this stuff. I can do it for my own. And if, if you have a question, I may be able to answer it. If not, I'll, I'll get it to the experts. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, is, thank you. Yeah. It's not my forte. I, you know, I, I sort of know how to do it, but I don't know all the ins and outs of bits and bytes and pixels and all that kind of stuff. It gets okay. a little overwhelming. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. okay. Probably one of the biggest hangups that people um, get into is the file naming. And it looks a little bit intimidating at first, but if you break it down bit by bit, it really is not that difficult. And the reason for this is we have programs that take the images when they come in and they order them and, and create a master file, if you will, of all the images. And so what we ask is that you tell us what number one what media type it is and that would be print versus digital well that one's easy because we're not doing prints so the very first thing you would enter would be the d for digital and then we're using underscores and if you look at your computer keyboard it's um above the, the p key on my keyboard and right next to the zero you hit the shift key and you get that underscore as opposed to a dash so we, we want media type an underscore and then the title of your image and it can be anything you want it to be, other than we really don't want to see it come in image 0456. <laughs> you know, we'd love to see a little bit of creativity um, for your images. Tell us what it is that you're trying to say with your picture. Um, you know, make the judges think a little bit. We've seen some hysterical titles. Um, and then we've seen some others that you're like, okay, you know, mountains at sunset. Yeah, okay, but you know, maybe you can come up with something a little more creative than that. And you'll notice when I wrote title of image, there are spaces in there. So if, if you have multiple words, make sure you put the spaces in, which is just fine, within the title. Then at the end of your title, you're going to do another underscore, your name, and then dot JPG. So when you break it down, it really is, is not that complicated. And you'll notice I said omit the brackets. So if you look at the example down below, D underscore on a clear day, underscore Karen Davis dot JPG. So that's, that's how we would like to see our, type, our um, file names come in. D for digital on a clear day was the name of a photo that I took of the Grand Canyon. And then my name. Okay, right. I have a comment. <laughs> okay. And this is just because I went through this with the um, with the uh, end of the year competition. I typed in .jpg, and I understood. And then I realized afterward that it fills that in for you, and you don't need to put that in there. You don't need unless to it's type changed. .jpg. No, most part, and not all of them do it. But I think when you export, like for instance in Lightroom, it's going to automatically add the .jpg. So just look at your file as you're attaching it to the email. And you, if it says .jpg, .jpg, <laughs> you probably want to rename it. It's, it's not the end of the world. 
but um, it might throw a hiccup into the program. So that's how it would appear. So probably you don't, in most cases, I don't think you're gonna need to type the .jpg. Most of the programs are gonna add that automatically. So great question, Carol, thank you. All righty, and planning ahead a little bit for when we do have an assigned subject. Let's see if I can scroll down here. It's just one little addition to that naming convention. Again, it's got that media type, the title of your image, your name, then you're gonna add another underscore and the letters AS for assigned subject. Now that's important because if you remember earlier, we talked about the rule that says when we have an assigned subject month, you have to put one of your images into a signed subject and the other image is just whatever you want it to be. So if they both come in and one of them does not have the assigned subject, the digital director doesn't know which one you intended to be in the assigned subject category. So just be real careful when that, um, again, I believe March, no, April will be the first time we have an assigned subject. So one of your images will have the AS at the very end and the other one will not. just a little preview of, of what is to come. Um, one of our newest members is Fred Morton, who is the current Virginia Professional Photographers Association, VPPA. He's the current president for VPPA. So we were tickled to death when he rejoined the camera club. He'd been a member years and years ago. And when I talked to Fred, he said, hey, what can I do to help out? And I said, hey, what would you like to do? <laughs> so Fred is going to do a presentation in uh, March, uh, March, April, no, I'm sorry, in April, he's going to do a presentation in April on photojournalism and um, street photography. And then the very next month, he will come back and do an evaluation. And that's when we're going to have our assigned subject of uh, street photography, photojournalism. So it'll be kind of a neat package, if you will. And hopefully he'll have time. He, he's going to try and lead a photo shoot before you have to turn in your photos for that evaluation. So we kind of like to take these themes and package them together, if you will. So that'll be really cool. He's been all over the place doing street photography and has won award after award after award. He has some amazing pictures from Cuba. So we're really excited that he's going to be uh, teaching that and then evaluating our images and giving us some feedback on those images. Okay, now that you have your files all named, what do you do with them? Well, the Saturday before our uh, camera club meeting, the normal meeting, by midnight, you need to send those to the digital director. And again, there's that email, digital.ccrva at gmail.com. And you can put them both in the same email and then put evaluation on there, paper clip them onto your email and send them off to Nelson Marquina, who is our new digital director. And then, as I said, what Nelson does is that he will gather them all together. And then usually on Sunday, um, maybe Monday, he'll get them all together and then get them to our evaluator. The evaluators are going to have a little bit of an opportunity to look at those images before the meeting on Wednesday night. So this, this month for February, it's this Saturday. That's your deadline. I believe that's the fifth. And then our meeting is the ninth at seven o'clock. We'll start at 6.30 with a little social time. And at seven, we'll have a brief meeting and then the evaluator will do his thing. Well, what is his thing? <laughs> so what'll happen is the, um, in this case, Nick likes, likes to be in control. So Nick will have all the photos and he's going to actually show them to you via his Lightroom software. So he'll bring them up one by one. He'll show the image. And I believe, yeah, Nelson will announce the title. The image will appear. And then Nick will say whatever it is he wants to say about that. You know, oh, this is a fabulous image. However, you might want to, you know, and he'll give you a few tidbits on it. And then once he finishes with his critique, then the photographer's name is announced. That was the part that always scared me. It's like, oh no, everybody's gonna know my photo. <laughs> but uh, really is very painless. So again, the, whoever the evaluator is, and in Nick's case, he, he really doesn't know our work very well. We have a couple of evaluators that evaluate every year and a picture will pop up and you might hear them say, oh, we know who that photographer is. So again, that goes back to why we ask you not to put your name on the image because we don't want to 
color the um, critique that you might get if the photographer knows that it's a particular person that he might be familiar with. Um, so, so that's the process. He'll go through image by image by image. And while I learn a lot from what they say about my photos, I really learn so much just hearing the feedback for, from everyone's photos because you, you learn by seeing what other people are doing and, and what people are recognizing as you know, a, a really good image. So these six evaluations that we have mentioned that we've got 12 photos, these photos will become what we call your standard images for the end of your competition. So if they've gone through that preliminary round, they become these standard images that in October, when we get ready to, to have our end of year competition, you can submit them for judging at the end of year. Now, if we, we do allow, I don't know if I should probably, I'll go into this just a little bit, but if there, you have up to five, what we call wild cards. So if the evaluator really, really, really didn't like one of your images and you wanna just kick that one to the curb, then you have these five kind of wild card spots that you can um, add five different images in for end of year. And you never know, sometimes you get lucky, like the one I mentioned earlier, my Grand Canyon um, on a clear day picture. I went on a trip late in September, or early October, came back, grabbed the image, said, okay, I need a landscape picture to put in for end of year and lo and behold, won an award. <laughs> So you never know. Sometimes those wild cards just will, can win for you. Um, but the standard images have a little bit of a uh, benefit because they've had that once over from the, uh, from the evaluator to give you some feedback on this. And I mentioned for help, if, um, if there's anything I can do to help you, I'll be happy to. These are the email addresses for both our digital director and our print director, who's twiddling his thumbs at the moment, but not really. Um, Leo has been fabulous with doing a lot of our videos for us because he didn't have any work to do with the prints. So that is kind of the, the overview of the process and what we do and why we do it. And um, just, to let you know what it's all about. Any, any other questions you want to go over any of that again? Not again, but I have a couple of questions. Okay. You ready? I'm ready, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> um, does putting the border, and I don't know how to do that, and I don't use Photoshop, so I heard you say that it was done in Photoshop, but does putting a border on or not affect how they will evaluate a picture? Doesn't so much affect the evaluation, but I have heard from several judges and you know, every judge is so different. Um, Anthony mentioned that, and of course he's also a member of VPPA. If you look at the work for most of the VPPA photographers that go through their competitions, which is a way higher level than ours, most of them do have some kind of border around them. And, and Anthony is very strong of the opinion that it finishes the picture. So that was the opinion that he gave us when he went through that whole training session. Well, it was about six months later that we had um, Jesse Boylan from Artworks, who is an artist. I mean, I don't think she's also a photographer, but she's, she's an artist. She's got that artist eye. And it was looking at things as, would I, would I want this in an art gallery? So we got that perspective from her evaluation and these pictures kept popping up with frames on just like, I don't know why you got those frames on there. That, that just doesn't do anything at all for the picture. Oh. <laughs> we were all going, oh, but Anthony just <laughs> taught us to put these frames on. <laughs> and, I, oh. and I remember my, one of my first years the, uh, at, with the club, we went through this evaluation and it was someone who hasn't evaluated for us a long time. I can't remember its name, but he wanted everything cropped in. You know, oh, there's too much white space around that. You really need to crop in so you can see that bird better. You know, crop, 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 crop. It's like every photo you want to crop. Well, the very next evaluation, all the pictures are coming in. And we're looking at them going, oh, man, they listened to the last evaluator. And it's this evaluator, like, well, that bird needs some room to breathe. You know, it's, <laughs> it's cropped in too tight. And you go, oh. Wow. <laughs> so, you okay. know, they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but it's also in the eye of the evaluator and the judge, the judge. so you, just, you never know do what makes you happy <laughs> okay and, and um, if you like 
I, I can maybe at a later point, I can pull up that Anthony Rumley video and, and kind of talk you through it. But um, I, but it's in Photoshop was, that they did it. Is that correct? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, forget that. <laughs> oh, you don't have photo. Okay. <laughs> I have it. I have no clue how to use it. Um, yeah. The other question I had was, uh, I guess it's kind of a future question. If when when we're doing this in person instead of on Zoom, will mm -hmm. we have to submit prints for evaluations, or is it's that just only, at the end of the year? It's your choice. Um, in in the old days before COVID. It was your choice. You could put in one print, two prints, one digital, two digitals, you know, whatever you wanted to do. It could be a combination of prints or digitals. And what it used to be, the rule was if you submitted a print to be evaluated, then it had to be submitted as a print at end of year. But we've sort of thrown that out the window because we keep hoping, like we did all last year, that, well, we're telling everybody do the digital, do the digital. And then when we get down to the wire, if we have a print competition, which we did not last year, mm -hmm. um, then we would allow you to make that switch. So, you know, you put it in as digital, which I think is a much better plan anyway, because who wants to go print something and then yeah. have it torn apart, if you will, by the evaluator? It's already done. This, 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 this. You've already printed it and you've spent all that money printing it. You know, I would yeah. love that, that what we're doing actually, I love it because I'll enter the digital I haven't really spent any money, just a lot of time mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. And then he can give me feedback and then I'll go have it printed maybe and enter it in the end of year as a print. Yeah. Um, okay. It's just, it puts okay. you in a different category for winning awards. If you're mm -hmm. all about winning awards, you know, because then you've got, you've got all the landscape digitals that'll compete for first, second, third honorable mention. And then you've got the landscape prints that will compete first, third honorable mention. So it oh, kind of divides the, the bucket of com competitors, competitive prints, if you will. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Which so, kind of a, a companion comment to go along with that. I've talked about the different buckets when we do prints, that you've got prints and digital. Um, we do have different buckets for black and white and color. So think about that as you're going through evaluations. Um, in some cases, I've seen people and then you are allowed to switch. Say you entered something in color for an evaluation and the evaluator says, you know, that would make a really great black and white. If you wanted to, you could switch it to black and white to enter at end of year. So again, there are different buckets for judging. We'll judge all the color architecture and then we judge all the black and white architecture. So they, they don't compete against each other. Just like the various groups um, I, those, I think all three of you were around um, the end of last or for last year. We, we used to have two groups. We had an A group and a B group. And they were, the B group were mostly the newer photographers that were coming into the club. There's not very many people in that. Everybody else was an A. So it became increasingly difficult to, to win anything in A. Plus, we found that we had so many photos coming in that we were getting really, really great photos. And we had rules that said, if you get 20 photos in a particular category, you can only give you know, two awards. You can only give first and second. Or if you had 30, you could give first, second, and third. And we said, you know, that's really not fair because we had some great awards. Like first, maybe first place was a, a 23 and second place was a 22 and it was a 21. But if we had so many, you know, a certain number of images, oh, we can only give first and second. So that's why we went to this merit-based system where we're gonna have a threshold and say, you know, if you make that threshold, you know, your, your picture should get some kind of a, a merit, an, an honorable mention at least, or a first, second or third place, depending on where it ranks, you know, with the other um, images that were submitted. And I think it worked really well last year. Um, so of course we have different thresholds for the A group, which are advanced photographers, the E group, which is expert photographers and everybody's self-selected where they want it to be. And then the N group is the novice intermediate folks. So those are, you know, the folks that have just come into the club or, you know, you could have entered several competitions, but you just don't feel ready to move up to the A group at this point. So three different groups, all these different categories. There's a lot of pictures floating around at the end of the year. All right, any other questions?
Uh huh. Can you see me? Okay. Um, yeah. So you yeah. mentioned as an example the um, training that was done on borders, for instance. Mm -hmm. And did you, you? I know you're recording. Are you recording this? I yeah, you're recording this. It. And so I was wondering if um, you've recorded like the training sessions throughout the year so we could go back and sort of look at some of those. Most of them where we hosted the training, we did record those and all of our meetings are recorded. Um, so you can actually go back and view an evaluation if you wanted to see exactly what it looked like. You don't have to watch the whole thing, but at least you get a feel for it. But if you go to right. our YouTube, YouTube channel, um, okay. My, let's see, are there any others? We re, the problem there is, is we have not conducted personally a lot of training because Mary Ann has been so great about finding all this free training out there. <laughs> and um, of course, we're at the mercy of whoever did the training session. Some of them are recording them and allowing us to keep those recordings. But in most cases, you know, it's, it's hit or miss. You know, you, you're there. And a lot of times if you attend, and they have you registered as an attendee, they will send you the recording afterwards. Um, oh, okay. We do try and record almost everything that we do and put it out on that YouTube channel and then categorize it as to whether it's a, a webinar or it's one of our meetings or it's an evaluation or it's just like this, a, a training session. So is it is a YouTube channel like a um, camera club of Rich, Richmond? It is. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Yeah, in fact, um, if you got the newsletter today, okay. look at my signature on that email and there are links to all of our um, online presence. So there's a link to the website, the Facebook page, the YouTube channel, et cetera. It's all right there in my signature. Okay. So all you have to do is just okay. click it. Mm -hmm. Right. And once you get okay. to the YouTube channel, you just bebop around and you'll find, I think Anthony Rumley's thing about the digital framing is under image evaluations probably. Okay. Yeah. And hopefully we'll get, you know, we'll start doing some more of these and uh and recording them. Leo is gung ho on doing videos. <laughs> While you're in there, look at some of the spotlights too. We've been spotlighting different members and that's been a ton of fun. I'm just basically a nosy reporter at heart. And I've gotten to know a lot of really, really cool people within the club. We did um we, we actually didn't do a video with Harold Lana, our new president, but I did a video with our digital director, with Nelson Marquina, Dr. Nelson Marquina, holy moly, he used to work for NASA, he worked, for, <laughs> worked with lasers, he worked with missile guidance systems, I mean, just a fascinating fellow, he's traveled all over the world, um, so the spotlights are, are quite interesting. Yeah. Sounds all great. Right. Well, one yeah. of the things I've been wanting to do the last couple years now is um, to re-enroll as a member, um, but I never knew how to find something that, you know, where I could send in my money. Oh, okay. Oh, we'd we'll, we'll love to take money. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, is it in? No, it wasn't in my email, but in the newsletter, or if you just simply go to the Camera Club of Richmond site, actually, let me stop sharing here and I can, I can show you. There is a link, um, our webmaster, Terry, has been busy. He's made a couple of changes to the website. And um, there's a link directly on the home page where you can go pay your dues. So let me share my screen again. Oh, it looks like Nelson did join. Nelson, are you on the call? He snuck in there and I didn't realize. <laughs> Probably doesn't know that he's muted. Yes. Oh, he is here. Hey, hey. Yeah, I'm here. I was just waxing eloquent about your, your spotlight and <laughs> what an interesting conversation we had the other day. All right, let's see. I guess I can go to, you don't want to see my contacts. There we go. CCR. So if you go to this uh, camera club of Richmond.com and I'm going to have to scroll down a little bit. Right here is where a new member would click to join. Mm. And then right here is where you would click to renew your dues. So the join button will take you to an online application that you fill out just to give us your name and address, and phone number, and email, and all that stuff. And then the renew, I'm going to click it and see if it works on the Zoom call, which I think it should. Yeah, there you go. 
It'll take you to PayPal <coughs> where you can um, pay your $40 and you actually don't have to have a PayPal account because there's this other button down here where you can um, pay with your credit card. So e either way, mm. so that's how to, to pay dues. Well, let's see what we're on here. Um, sometimes it doesn't like jumping around. So I'm gonna stop the share. And I also see, I wasn't paying attention. I see Scott joined us and Heidi joined us. So hopefully you got most of that uh, presentation. The, anybody else have other questions? And Nelson, I introduced you earlier, um, our new digital director. Do you have any uh, words of wisdom as you are uh, getting your feet wet on this new job? Yeah, you're right. Getting my feet <laughs> wet, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's why I'm attending your presentation. I'm learning a lot, taking notes and all that. Oh, boy. Um, actually, my main focus was trying to see what questions people have. Uh, because, yeah, I, I read, of course, the, the requirements, and the format and all that stuff. I'm just trying to see what kind of question, like sizing the image. Yeah, that's important. That's yeah. um, so I'm trying to get ready. That for was that. one that Carol had, and I sort of answered it because I told her I'm not really that technical when it comes to that. So here's here's your technical guru, Carol. Um, yeah, actually, what I'm, what I'm thinking about doing is maybe some examples of different um, applications besides Photoshop and, and Lightroom. Some people may be using Affinity, uh, Luminar, who knows? It has mm. examples of different applications. So that's that's kind of my, my immediate task to show examples on, on, with different programs. Okay, super. I, I haven't heard of too many folks that are, are doing that. We might have on the other end of things where, um, Carol, how are you preparing your images to, to send in if you're not using Lightroom or Photoshop? What are you, what are you doing? I'm, I'm using Lightroom. Oh, you are using Lightroom. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. I think it was. Maybe it was Julie. Was it Julie? I think it was me who said that because, um, as I said, I used to use Photoshop, but recently I've just been um, downloading my pictures onto my computer and I can craft them and, you know, do things like that. And I don't really need a program, um, a special program. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> they seem to what be what I found by tomorrow. accident, kind of, was um, when I was just just on the computer looking at my pictures, and I, I found it when we were doing end of year competition. I had no idea how to how to put a name on a picture, and I happened to click on the little dots on the side of the picture on my computer, and it, there was a drop down, and one of them was uh, I forgot how that reads. Um, Probably rename. Well, it said file information or something like that. And then on the other side of the screen popped up all this stuff that you needed to put in there. I was thrilled because I had no, I, you know, until I saw that, I had no clue what to do. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so you, that's where you put the name and, and it gave the information about the size of it and the whatever it is, megabytes or something. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was real happy to find that. So I don't know. I assume everybody else in the world knew that except me. <laughs> she does that they, we need to capture all these ideas you know people are using windows some people are using macintosh mm -hmm. the different ways of you know putting names to the files so we can uh, they used to have a lot of examples for different uh, applications you know editing programs and then whether it's windows or macintosh yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah i'm not much with a apple i'm a i'm a windows gal so if you got Windows questions, I can handle them. But there are plenty of folks within the club that, that are Apple, Apple people, and they can they can help you. Nelson, you have both, right? Yes, I must have a split personality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. Being a southern boy, you know, I'm from south of the equator and I live in north of the equator. So I, half of my brain is down there, the other half of it is over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. Well, as I mentioned, your, your <laughs> deadline is Saturday night. <laughs>
but you got a few days and uh, I'll be standing by if you have any other questions or you, again, if you'd like to send the photos to me first and I'll make sure that they're named correctly and sized correctly. And, uh, and then you just shoot them off email to Nelson and then he gets really busy on Sunday. <laughs> I'll, I'll be up on Saturday midnight, you know, biting my nails. Twelve oh one. I'm infamous for the eleven fifty five. I'm hitting sin. <laughs> <laughs> Michael used to give me a hard time. You know, eleven eleven fifty five. He goes, "Oh, you're early this time. Oh, yeah, I'm eleven fifty eight last last month." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think you guys will be pleasantly um, surprised and, and pleased with, with Nick Stover's delivery and his insights. And so even if you don't submit anything, please come, you know, on Wednesday night to the meeting um, in any meeting, because you'll learn a lot from seeing other people's photos. But I hope you will take the plunge. Be brave. <laughs> Put some pictures in. Doesn't hurt. Right, Carol? I don't know yet. <laughs> Maybe it will. <laughs> Well, Nick Stover was great last time he did it you know, last year. He was, he he was, was awesome. really, I learned yeah. a lot. Yes, very much. And I think, um, so Julie, remind me now, You have you submitted before? You have not, have you? I have not. No, I, I have not. I've always just found this part um, just yeah. too confusing for me. So hopefully, you know, kind of walking through it like this will help. All right. And I think George, George has entered before. Heidi, have you entered before? I know I've seen your pictures. I have not. Uh, yeah. I have not had a chance. And I'm lucky that I'm on this call tonight. I'm taking care of my 100-year-old mother. So oh that my. kind of prevents me from doing a lot of things these days. But I'm yeah. hopeful that maybe okay. this weekend I can try to submit something. Super. Well, I think I've seen your pictures around town because I, yeah. I know I've seen your photos. Yeah, I mean, I try to do some of the artworks exhibits and uh, mm -hmm. I think I had a show there last year um, about icebergs and I'm hoping to do one later this year on horses. Awesome. So every yeah. now and then I try and I, you know, something to look forward to, something That's to balance great. everything out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And Scott, how about you? Have you, I don't think you have entered. Well, I'm from New York, so I just, I didn't realize you folks are from uh, Virginia Club. Hey, that's okay. You know, we have <laughs> members all over the place and uh, in, in this digital world. Yeah, join join up and send us send us your photos. I'm from like Staten to... Island. So I... Staten Island. Okay, what do you like to shoot? Uh, pretty much everything. Okay. Uh, landscape is my favorite. But I do do portraits, uh -huh. headshots, dance photography, stuff like that. Ooh, okay. Yes, yeah. we have we have a little bit of that. We, as I mentioned earlier, it may have been before you came on the call. We we have 116 members as of right now, and wow. um, you know we're kind of the Central Virginia area <laughs> because Carol is um, east of us in the Williamsburg area. We've got a few folks from Northern Virginia, a few folks from the Western part of Virginia, but hey, in this digital environment, our evaluators right. from California. So mm. Nick is Nick is joining yeah. us from California to evaluate the images that we're all sending in. Mm. So yeah, we'd love, love to have you join in. I'll check it out. I'll check out your website. Okay. Yeah. Check out the website. Like I said, there's a place there on that homepage that, you know, it's, it's a $40 membership fee for the year and you participate in all of those and all of the evaluation, we do six a year, and then we have an end of year competition. It'd be kind of fun. We say, hey, we have a New York member. <laughs> just, we just added two youth members. We had to change our bylaws. Um, so we have an eight-year-old young man and a, I think she's 17 now, 17-year-old young lady that is a high school student in the area who wow. just founded a photography club in her school. So she's, she's kicked that off. So we, we like to be diverse. Great. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? All right. Well, do you I'm, have a question for you? If I do, if I did join, do you have a place where you go to to load the pictures? What we are doing is e just simply emailing them. There are two photos that you would send. Oh, you email. Okay. You just email them to our digital director, Nelson. 
who is right there above you on my grid anyway. I know. <laughs> She's waving. Um, <laughs> yeah, so he collects them all by email. And um, then he'll compile those, submit them out to um, Nick out in California. And then Nick, he did an evaluation for us last year. He, he will go through, kind of do a preview of them. And then um, at our meeting on Wednesday night, he'll go through and critique each of the photos via Lightroom. So he likes to show them in Lightroom because he can actually demonstrate, you know, how he wants to lighten a particular area right. like crop it here or whatever. He is absolutely awesome. So, um, yeah, even if you don't submit photos, you should jump in and, um, and hear Nick's you evaluation. Every, the, every second Wednesday? Like it is the second Wednesday of each month. Month. Yeah. So just once a month, you guys. Yeah, okay. Once a month. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It keeps us busy. Karen can't take any more than that. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Karen can't take much more than that. So Scott, are you a member of a club there in New York? Yes. Uh, Gateway Camera Club and okay. the Staten Island Camera. I actually belong to two clubs. Sorry. Okay. Jesus. But I don't know if you ever heard of the New Jersey Federation. I have. Okay. Now, uh, this gentleman, uh, I don't know, somebody created an upload software. So we just upload. It has all the camera clubs listed, and you just pick your club and you upload however amount of pictures that are going to be oh. you know, put up. It's a digital software. He just person mm -hmm. created, but it's through the, I don't know. It's pretty it easy through, though. Yeah, is it through Whereas, PSA? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about um, maybe going down that road road um, when we thought COVID was gonna only be around for a little while. <laughs> and we said, well, okay. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people quit the club though because a lot of people quit because they don't like what well, we're the Zoom part of it. The Zoom, yeah. We lost a few, but strangely enough, we have grown. We grew our membership uh, over the last two years. Yeah. This is why I don't understand our, our clubs ain't doing well. At least, <laughs> oh. I mean, we were over 50, now we're 15. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can feel free to digitally join us. It would be fun. <laughs> yeah. I'll definitely check out your websites. All right. Great. Thanks. The uh, camera. Cameraclubofrichmond.com. Yep. I wrote that down. Yeah. Thank you. All right. 